people always ask me, you know, do you want to be, do you want to go to Mars? And I say, I'd love to go to Mars. I would not want to be the first. I would not want to be the fifth. I'd want to be the 444th. I'm Christina Thomas. I'm an assistant professor in the Department of Astronomy and Planetary Science. My name is Mark Salvatore. I'm an associate professor and the associate department chair in the Department of Astronomy and Planetary Science. Okay, I am Josh Emery. I'm a professor here at NAU in the Astronomy and Planetary Sciences Department. My name is Cece Tiberger. I am a now second year PhD student at NAU's Department of Astronomy and Planetary Science. My primary uh, research includes asteroids of various different flavors. My research is primarily in planetary science and surface processes on Earth and Mars. I'm really interested in how landscapes and soils form over time. My research focus is um, mostly planetary astronomy, mostly observing small bodies in the solar system. I am in the Astrophysical Materials Lab where we study ices, um, trying to simulate environments of moons in the outer solar system such as Titan. The Expanse for how they described the solar system, the, the different bodies they had bases on and everything, the representation of that. The Europa report, I think they, they, they used real um, NASA imagery of, of Europa, one of the large moons of Jupiter, which actually does have a subsurface ocean. Um, that's, it's thought to be the most likely place for habitability. I don't know whether there are giant sea monsters under there, but the imagery that they used, um, I just love the when there are accurate representations of surfaces. The, the thing that really actually got me into science fiction and then, you know, into astronomy was uh, the original Star Wars trilogy, uh, specifically um, The Empire Strikes Back. I love that movie. Thinking about space travel very critically, The Expanse is actually my favorite show. I'm reading the rest of the books right now so that I can get a flavor of where the story goes. But they really spend a lot of time thinking very, very carefully about what would happen it, with humans, with people? How would you actually do a lot of the space travel? And watching the way that they filmed it and how some of the, the gravity, the way that they simulate the gravity and the way that people interact in space is actually really good. I think for numerous reasons, I have to say The Martian. Andy Weir did a lot of research uh, when it came to what kind of processes take place on Mars. Certainly there was some over-exaggeration in certain aspects of it, but um, I know that he really did his research. He talked to a lot of NASA scientists. He spent some time at the Jet Propulsion Lab um, talking with scientists to really try to get the science down. You know, there, there are other great ones. Obviously, Armageddon is a fantastic one to watch, you know, with, with friends and family. My two top two favorites are Contact and Interstellar. They are, they're really good. The, the Interstellar also just makes me cry every time I see it. Like, that, I'm not gonna spoil it, but you need to go, everyone go watch it. <laughs> I, I do think that we're going in a direction where there's going to be a lot of commercial uh, providers that can take uh, some of the people with enough money into space. And I think that's happening right now at a, a larger and larger level really every day. Um, and I'm hoping that that gets down to the, to the point where people can do that as they want to, right? I um, think that NASA is also thinking about what we want to do in terms of uh, human space exploration. So I think in the next decade, NASA has plans to start to establish a long-term presence on the moon. I think that's going to be necessary. I think it's absolutely valuable. So the idea being that before we spend years potentially on the surface of Mars, why don't we spend years on the surface of the moon, perfect what it's like to maintain an environment, to um, socialize with the same four people for two years or whatever it's going to wind up being. There's a lot of benefit to testing all those capabilities and technologies out on the moon. We're really in such a great era of space exploration. NASA and other space agencies continue to send spacecraft throughout the, the solar system. I think continuing that, you know, make the sort of first step is to make, make sure that we don't dial back that exploration, that we keep taking those next steps. But rumor has it that at lunch one time, uh, Enrico Fermi, the famous uh, physicist from Los Alamos National Labs, just asked the question, okay, hot shots, you know, if, if there are aliens out there everywhere, why haven't we heard from them? Where is everybody? I don't think we're alone in the universe. I think there are other civilizations probably. For a scientist, life in the universe means something very different than from what people read in science fiction. A lot of people are looking for even signs of bacterial growth and things like that, which would be a huge discovery. I would like to think that we are just 
technologically not advanced enough yet to make contact with these other, you know, alien civilizations. I like that thought a lot more than having like one apex predator scenario where they are eating all the other civilizations. I think most reasonably, like we are probably just not advanced enough yet. So if you're interested in chemistry and space, there's a place for that. If you're interested in biology and space, there's a place for that. If you're interested in art and space, there's a place for that. So anything that you're interested in that has a space bent, there's a place for it. So approach faculty members at your university who are interested in astronomy and space, even if that's not your main interest. Pursue your passion to the fullest um, because there will be a spot for passionate experts um, in all aspects of planetary science and astrobiology and the future of space exploration. Just talk to people and, you know, take to the internet, Google, like any sort of outreach events or opportunities where you could get involved as, you know, maybe a student research assistant or even just like public talks that you could attend. And the more you ask questions, oh my gosh, ask so many questions. There are no dumb questions. Think about it as something that you really want to do. Um, because it, depending on your approach, can take long nights, long days, different, different travel opportunities, and some of these projects take a very, very long time. For example, our, our mission to Pluto uh, took 10 years just to get to Pluto. <laughs> and so um, the time scales on these things really put a lot of stuff into perspective. Um, really think about you know, how you could best support yourself because uh, there's uh, a lot of folks in this field and many of us are, are interested in seeing you succeed. You just have to find the, the right folks for you.